Hey guys, it's Faithy MacGyver here. Um, we're going to have a look at a drag here, Vupu drag. This is one that has actually had a problem where it's, um, it's burnt the circuit board inside. Now I've seen a few posts lately of drags doing this and I think it's got a lot of, peop lot of people worried um, that theirs is going to do the same. So um, there's not that many posts, honestly, there's probably three or four that I've seen. Um, considering how many how many of these mods are going to be out there, there's I know they've sold a lot of drags. We're only looking at a really small percentage, but the thing that is a bit of a worry is that it's it seems well it's a big failure. First of all, uh, we'll get it out and we'll have a look. It's a big failure, and um, it seems to be the same kind of failure happening each time. So it could be a reoccurring thing. Could be. A design fault or something or a bad batch um, so we really want to get inside one and just see what's what's actually going on now this drag was sent to me by these guys the vaping kiwi um, it was Tim actually that I talked to super super nice of them to just send this over to me um, I hadn't even asked I was planning on asking um, if anyone could volunteer a, a burnt drag for me to test um, and these guys actually just saw a comment of mine on the ECR um, subreddit and got in contact and said, yep, we've got one, we'll send it to you. Um, they threw in a DHL bag, turned up in like two days. So awesome, thank you, really appreciate that. Um, super nice guy. Um, also, Michael from um, Hawks Bay Vapor, he's a great dude, he helped organize this as well. All right, so enough talking, let's have a look. I thought it would be a good idea to do this on camera. First of all, so you guys can see as I pull it apart uh, what's going on, but also for my own benefit that if I miss something the first time around, I can always go back and watch, uh, watch the video just to see if I missed anything. Okay, so pretty easy to tell it's had a big failure. This is the circuit board running along this side here. Now I don't have another drag. To compare but I do have an alpha one the board assembly out of an alpha one and it's really really similar so it's it's actually it's kind of swapped so it's a slightly different configuration but um, it's a gene board it's a this is a two this is a 200 the drag is what a 157 uh, it shouldn't matter a great deal they're gonna be really really similar uh, so I can kind of tell what wiring configuration they're using how they've constructed the sled. So I've got something to reference off there at least. Uh, okay, so we'll just try to note whatever we can along the way, to give us any clues. Well, first of all, the device is quite used. So it's, you know, it's got some wear and tear on it. It looks, you know, it's been used as a daily, uh, daily device, obviously. It doesn't look doesn't look like it's been heavily dropped. There's no real dents or big gouges, scratches, things like that. A little bit of juice ingress here at the top. Nothing too major. It's not like it's soaked or anything. A little bit on the screen. Um, obviously the USB port looks completely fried as well as a, there's a battery insulator. That is melted to the bottom of the tray. Um, the right hand cell position seems fairly unaffected. Okay, what could we test before pulling it apart? I might try and put an image up of another drag that's had the same problem and it had a, a 30Q, Samsung 30Q here. This bay was empty, but on the 30Q, the top of the wrap was melted and it looked like there was a little arcing mark where that cell had shorted out. And just having a look at how this is wired, um, yeah, we'll go through that first. The way it's wired and the way it's set up is the board is not, it's not connected to ground by the screw points. A lot of boards, are, they have metal or have the gold metal on the screw points and that will screw down onto a metal metal, ca metal case, metal frame, something like that. And there's ground running 
all under the board. So if a cell shorts out to case, it's just going to go through the case and it, obviously that's bad. You never want a cell shorting out. Very bad news. But if it does, it won't ruin the board because all the current path will go through the case or the mounting points. Now on on the drag and, and the alpha, I assume the drag, I'm, you know, we'll see when we open it up. It's mounted to plastic. Okay, so, and the the ground for the atomizer on the board is the same as the ground for the cells. The main negative into the cells is the same as the ground for the atomizer. Lots of different things on the board connect back to ground. So what ends up happening is there's a lot of area, a lot of copper track area on this board that is ground. It, it'll travel all the way through the board. Um, so effectively there is a connection. It's because of, sort of like a network of, of copper tracks that are all grounded as we go along. Um, so where I'm getting to with that is that if, if battery power shorts to the 510 negative, which is also the case because the 510 plate is electrically tied to the case, so if anything shorts to the case, the one of the batteries short to the case, uh, it's got to go back through the entire board to get back to cell negative. So that's what will cook cook the board. So my initial thoughts are there's something shorting out, either wiring or a cell cell can. If the cell can of this side cell shorts to the case, it has to go back through the board a heap of current from the cell will go through the board trying to get back to ground uh, or it's negative basically um, and that can obviously cause a hell of a lot of damage is what's happened here okay so what can I test first what we'll do we will go we'll get our meter out here so I might have to do a few cuts on this video because it might get quite long because I'm just rambling. And I'm sorry if it jumps around a little bit. Um, so we're just using continuity test. So first of all, I'll, whoops. First of all, I will prove that the ground for the 510, which is this guy, is common with the ground to the cells. So if we just clip under there, touch to there we have got continuity so we're measuring through the ground plane of the board there we've got main positive main negative uh, coming from the cells on these connections and we've got just a series connection series connection across the cells here and a monitoring wire that goes back to the board so that series connection should never ever touch case ground, case metal. Um, same as the, it'll be the can, because that's a negative. The can of this cell, like the outside metal of this cell, should never touch the case either. That's um, instant hard short. Uh, so that contact, that contact, and this cell outside. Um, absolutely cannot short to case metal. So we can test that. Let's just see if, um, well, first of all, we'll go across these. So we confirm that, yep, they've got continuity. So that is indeed the cell uh, cell series connection. It's just a straight connection across. And let's measure back to, to ground. No, so that's going to be the same. Um, okay, so there's no shorts. Yeah, there's no shorts from there from these contacts back to ground, so that's good. Right, so we'll get into the board here. We will get inside the mod at least. That's what I meant to say. Pop out these. Probably fast forward this part. A little indication it hasn't been taken apart before. Hoopoo security sticker seems intact. It's normally pretty pretty easy to tell with these screws if it's been taken apart before. Uh, you often see like a little tool mark on there or 
one will be tighter than the other one will be loose or something like that and these look untouched so I'm relatively sure this device has never been taken apart or messed around with by the owner okay this is going to be quite melted in I think be a little bit careful here because um, we don't want to damage don't want to damage anything inside and then not know if that was us or from before By the way, it's lucky you guys can't smell this because it, it stinks. If you've ever had electronics fry on you, they give that really distinctive, acrid, nasty smell. So there's, there's no doubt when something's fried, you smell it through the whole room, which is um, my whole whole room, whole workshop, literally smells like horrible fried electronics right now, which is just delicious. a little bit more juice inside I say that looks like like kind of caramelized juice but it may not be uh, sometimes when MOSFETs and other transistors fry uh, they let out quite a weird sticky gooey stuff so it could very well be that um, so that, that may not be juice Look at the 510. It all looks pretty normal. There's actually not that much juice under there. We can see that there is an, an O ring underneath the 510, this guy here. Uh, same as in the Alpha. Now it appears to have done its job pretty well. So there's you know if there's gonna be juice, it's gonna be sitting right underneath the 510, and there's really not there's not that much there. Actually, there's pretty much no juice at all in there. Um, and on the bottom of the 510 itself, it's, yeah, I remember this from the, see if you guys can see that, uh, from the Alpha. They actually use a black sealant, like a kind of a silicon sealant on the bottom here. It's, it's pretty decent. And we can see it's done its job because it's just, it's all dry there. Um, so this o-ring's been sealing here and of course the 510 the center pin moves uh, which can make it a little tricky to seal um, but it does have that black silicon there it looks like silicon or some sort of sealing compound so it's been doing its job there's um, that's pretty good I'm happy with that just gonna dis desolder the 510 and hopefully that'll give us a bit better access well let us take the board out right so what can we see in here a bit more juice over that side it may have gotten in through through the battery door, I guess. Again, it's not a lot. Wow, it's gonna be pretty tricky to see what's happened here. Yeah, a bit more juice on the screen. It's really gunky. 
in this side but again that could just be from just the heat of, of this board shorting out I'm not sure if that's juice or not it's looking like at the moment mm, points of ingress for juice not at the 510 that was fine and that's all dry ingress looks like either around the battery door I mean, it doesn't matter too much if you get a bit in here because it's just kind of plastic sled, no big deal. Around the screen, there's nothing really stopping juice getting past the screen. That's a plastic carrier for the screen, so it's not silicon or nothing sealing there. Uh, so, yeah, fire button. Um, um, Tim actually from um, Vaping Kiwi said they had a couple of drags that failed, uh, the fire button failed, which could have been from juice ingress. This one's looking pretty okay. There's not really much juice there, but there is, you can see the little droplets. Uh, let's see if you guys can see it, get it in the light. There's little droplets all over the screen and over the screen carrier. Just a lot of that plastic carrier has melted away. Let's get rid of this um, fire button out of here. Oh, that's just disgusting in there. That's got to be... Yeah, it's got to be juice down there. So the inside of the device is... It's got a coating. It'll be whatever the, whatever the paint finish is on the outside looks very similar. Um, just seeing if there's any. Doesn't look to be any shorting points here. Um, that paint really should should give it a decent protection um, from from shorts. Like it's not supposed to be a, a dielectric as such, or you know an insulator to protect it properly like you're not going to have any bare wires and just go oh, that's the bare wires are fine because there's paint there no but it is an extra layer of protection there and if something has rubbed through that we should be able to see it through the bare metal there's a bare metal down here where the wires are but they're pretty well protected see on the wires yeah, so this is a series connection up here. So all you've got coming from the batteries up top is this little tiny sense wire. And the two main connections that actually flow all the current are these two down here. And the negative is just just the normal wire. The positive has got an extra, uh, we'd call that spaghetti tubing. It's it's probably fiberglass. I'm pretty sure it's fiberglass. Um, fiberglass tubing, which gives it, you can see it on this one, gives it that extra layer of protection from abrasion. It's pretty good at abrasion. Uh, and it's, it's just another layer, another, another insulating layer. So, you know, it's pretty well thought out, really. Um, they have kind of thought about what's going to short out there. If, you know, you're carrying the device and it's getting bumped and jiggled and you know it's probably in the car with you vibrating in the cup holder stuff like that and things do move inside and over time you can sort of you can get enough abrasion just from things vibrating that you can go through wires if something's pressed hard up against something else so they've they've thought about that which is good mm. it's kind of not looking like there's any major major wiring faults or there's nothing that's um that's fallen apart and you know it's not like a cell contacts come apart and touched into case metal or anything so this uh i mean i can probably show you on on either really this one's a bit cleaner uh, there's two carriers top and bottom for the contacts so it's only the the top contacts that are sprung so there'll be two little springs under there and this carrier here just holds it all together, stops the, the well, basically just holds the contacts in place and holds the spring against them. And 
on the bottom here, these are just solid solid contacts, but again, you've got another little removable carrier there, a little removable frame to, to keep everything in place. And that all looks fine, really. There's, there's heat there, but it's there would be heat if it, say if the board just failed and shorted in a big way, then it's going to draw a lot of current from the cells and these are just naturally going to get hot anyway. So it wouldn't, yeah, it doesn't mean there's a wiring fault necessarily. The two wires still seem fairly well separated, like the negative's not right jammed up against the positive. That carrier is melted. Yeah, man, it stinks. Oof. It's starting to give me a bit of a headache. We'll just pop these wires off and have a look at these contacts under here. Wires. Pop these screws out. We'll just pop these screws out and have a look at the contacts. Mm. I said wires. I don't think there's anything shorting out as far as wires coming loose, contacts coming loose, wires shorting into the case. Don't think that's the issue. is just completely falling off the board. Uh, I can't really tell much from that. And obviously with the board being so roasted, there's absolutely no way to tell what fried first. There's a lot of gunk down here. That really shouldn't be there, but it, it it's probably this whole carrier part. Well, this frame part of the screen that's melted and dripped down into there. So where's the hottest point, do you think? Your guess is as good as mine. Um, that component, whatever that is, look like looks like definitely a hot spot. It's been enough to sort of push through the plastic there you can see that just in try to look at the screen and point at the same time just in here um, it's kind of like the heat has just pushed that plastic out so what you've got on these boards and it's very very similar from board to board anything regulated is going to follow a very similar kind of setup you're going to have a main microcontroller often it's hidden under the screen and it's going to be a multi-pin square IC um, and that's going to be that guy under there it's going to be the main microcontroller that, that's the brains of the operation so that's what's generating the graphics for the screen and the interface and it's what's actually controlling the, vol uh, the voltage converter um, either buck or boost converter basically DC switching converter and on the back here is, is all the, the heavy duty stuff so two big inductors and you'll have two MOSFETs, well, often a lot more MOSFETs, sometimes four or even six. And these guys, the MOSFETs are basically switches, they're doing switching. The inductors here and these little guys' capacitors are energy storage. So not to get too complicated into um, boost converters, but they're, these guys are switching on and off. Um, they're using that timing and duty cycle to um, fill up these energy storage passives uh, and that's what allows you to control the voltage level at the output and that's how basically that's how you've got a regulated mod where you can change your your voltage output and get a different wattage so these are the power components here and that's a I'm pretty sure that's a MOSFET and that's it's gonna need at least two MOSFETs that's actually not a lot I mean they're gonna have to be real really high current MOSFETs they don't have heat sinks on them and the components are actually scrubbed off as well. So there's no identifying marks on here. So I can't, I won't be able to look up a data sheet for these and see what current capacity they are, for example. 
other boards. What else can I show you? Okay. Um, this guy here. This is actually uh, the Aegis, Aegis Geek Vapor. <laughs> the Legend. We'll call it the Legend. That's easier. Um, this guy's got four. They're a bit smaller. A bit smaller than the MOSFETs on here. And it's only got one big inductor. Um, but it's the same setup. Very similar setup. Um, these guys do actually have the component numbers on them. That's how they're, they're originally made from the manufacturer. And well, Vupu might have requested these to be scrubbed off, which is, it's just kind of stupid because it's like they think they're protecting design. It's, I mean, you can just, MOSFETs are simple components. It really, it's not going to stop anyone stealing their design if someone wanted to. And there's, there's nothing groundbreaking about a, a buck converter, DC switching converter. It's just not even that complicated, really. Um, it's just annoying that go to the trouble of scrubbing off the component numbers because then I can't see what current rating these are. Um, but there is a there is one of the one of the big MOSFETs down the bottom there. So being one of the, the major power components, they take they take all the current basically. Uh, they take a lot of the current. So they're the guys that are, that are going to get hot. It'd be a lot nicer to see heat heat sinks on them, really. Um, not many do. Some Wizmec, some E-Leaf mods will put a heat spreader. Uh, Joytech was the other one I saw. But Primo had a, had a decent little heat spreader on it. You call it heat spreader, heat sink, same thing. Um, it's basically just a just an extra lump of metal that's pressed down onto the and thermally coupled to the MOSFETs uh, just to get the heat away from it. Because these little packages, there's there's really not much mass in there. They're tiny, so when they heat up, they they really can just the heat can just go through the roof because there's just nowhere for it to go. The heat's just just trapped in the component. Um, which like if they if it's designed properly, if they um, if they're high enough current capacity and at the at the current they're expecting to see in their design through these. Um, if these are rated properly, well, derated for not having a heatsink on them. Yeah, I mean there shouldn't be any problems, but it does mean they're running hotter, and the hotter the MOSFETs run, the the higher chance they have of failing. So no screw under there, no, just a peg. Okay, so we're gonna try and we're gonna try and take the board out here. Jeez, it's not even much to take off because there's nothing left. Um, there's a screw under there. Jesus, that's part of the. Um, I can see white white plastic there would have been part of this. It's actually dripped down. Well, it's kind of interesting looking under there. Those components are not burnt. They've kind of been protected by the um, by the dripping plastic there. Take this screw out. And the board should pretty well just fall away at this point. Apart from the fact it's melted everything to itself. Okay, so that wasn't that's just melted plastic, is it? Yeah, so there's more white under there. So, so that is melted melted screen carrier. Yikes, look at that. Yeah, it's actually quite different on the back to the Alpha. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a 157 board. This is rated as a 200. So it's only got one inductor, one big inductor. Oh, I need another drag board for comparison. I might be able to get a picture of 
a, a good drag board on, online. Wow, so roasted. It's just components that have fallen off here. I reckon that's a little surface mount capacitor. Was. Uh, that's actually magnetic. Anyway. So battery management's, battery management wire, the sense wire's got Okay, it's not burnt, it's not been overloaded with current, it's just got some sooty stuff on it there from everything else burning around it. Okay, so it hasn't shorted through, the current hasn't gone through the monitor wire. Um, just going to pop this top contact off here, this um, little top cradle here holding the series contacts. And just want to have a look how those wires look, these connections in here. So it's pretty obvious that the the bottom one was really burnt, the positive wire coming from that cell um, saw a lot of current, but the top one, I mean, it, it's kind of weird because it's it's got to go somewhere. The current's got to go somewhere. It's got to go in a loop. It can't just come out of the positive and go into the board and fry things without it going somewhere else. So it just, it's a bit weird how it's, that's so burnt and the other negative isn't. crusty board stuff in there. Uh, just get out of there. I think that's just dropped into there. So these contacts look, uh, they look okay. Um, that wire's not really burnt. The contacts aren't discolored or anything. Just get all this stuff out of the way. I'm just push them out from underneath. All right, so we've got the whole board clear of the plastic frame. Yeah, so they're all looking fine. And again, this sense wire is kind of charred. It's not really charred, it's just, um, I mean, it's got black stuff on it, but that's just, uh, just from smoke coming up off the board. It's not actually, not actually like internally fried or it hasn't seen a lot of current, I don't think. A bit more of a clue I found here. I was looking at this wire and thinking this wasn't damaged or it didn't get hot, but if you can see there, there's a melted mark and indent into the plastic case just along exactly where this wire would have gone. So you can see it fits perfectly into that indent there. Now there's a chance it's I mean, there's a slim chance it's because all this plastic got hot and softened and it had pressure on it holding there, but I don't know. I don't think so. I think it, I think this wire has gotten very hot as well. Um, I think that's melted it into the plastic case. You can see exactly where that follows uh, through there. So to a degree, it's actually protected this area. Um, now this is, um, this is silicon jacket wire so it's rated to 200 degrees Celsius um, it can take a lot more heat um, before you know instantaneously before it's going to degrade um, the silicon generally well it doesn't melt it'll just burn once it gets to a certain temperature um, I know from experience I can I've kind of tested this with a soldering iron using a hot soldering iron tip at about about 400 degrees it doesn't really leave a mark, um, so I wouldn't be surprised if it can go well above that 200 degrees. Um, and like, how much is the plastic going to melt? Uh, need before it melts? Probably, you know, let's say 200 to 250 degrees. It's going to start melting through this plastic. I'm not sure what type of plastic this is. It could just be ABS. It seems it's very light. It seems like it would be kind of brittle. Um, 
I don't think it's nylon or like a PA polyamid material. Um, oh, I don't know the different plastic types that well or their melting points, but um, it's not going to be super high either way. It's not, you know, two to 300 degrees and this stuff's going to start melting. If I put a soldering iron tip on, on this at 400 degrees, it will definitely melt. So um, that's that, that looks like, you know, it looks like it's just all the current has gone through this other series connection. So that's the main negative. So it's gone through this cell, across the series connection, down to this cell, and back out, you know, just as a normal current path as what it, what it would when it was operating. Um, again, it's, it's strange that none of these have really any substantial damage on them either. Um, and this one is completely toasted, but it, it, you know, this has basically caught fire at this point. So what we're seeing there um, is really just a result, you know, of it being in the in the area. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sort of hundred percent on any of these. I, I still just find it quite weird that that contact there is just so heavily melted out of the case, while this contact over here, which theoretically, if it's going through the series circuit with both cells, should be getting, you know, just as hot. Um, yeah, and the fact that it's melted that insulator there and not up there theoretically should be the same both cells should be getting just as hot um yeah, some other unanswered questions there so then i start having a look at where the main amount of heaters come from and i was talking about these mosfets these guys um they're one of the main power components on the board they get the hottest and also they're capable of switching the most amount of current um, I don't have another drag board to compare to, but I do have a little, um, if you can see that, just a snapshot of um, a YouTube video. Um, I'll put the link in. It's it's Russian, so I couldn't understand anything he was saying, obviously. But just to have a look, and there is a MOSFET that should be there, and it is just completely gone. It's just turned to ashes. And it does look like that area right there um is where the most heat has been so like further down here there's bits of plastic that are still sort of shiny like they they've melted and then solidified and here it's just it's just completely gone it's it's really dry it's just ashy um, and there's probably the most amount of damage to the actual fiberglass there as well and then you can see that just the heat and the fumes rising is is what's caused all this blackening up here on the top of the board. Um, my other theory of a cell can touching the case and then going back through the, the ground plane of the board, uh, I don't think is right because it would have to come back in through the 510 negative to get back to the cell negative and none of the tracks up there are damaged. So they all, they're all looking clean and normal up the top there. Um, yeah, as I said, any of the, the blackening up here I think is just from just purely from from smoke and you know other crap getting up from it actually burning. So at this point, I've mm, I, I can't really make any other decisions apart from that juice damage. Something's failed massively on the board. I mean, it could be it could be unrelated to juice completely. It could just be a board fault. It could be um, this MOSFET. MOSFETs do fail. Sometimes they'll they'll fail open. Sometimes they'll fail closed. If it fails close or switches close on its own, it could, yeah, completely mess things up. Um, you know, possibly it should be switching with the other ones. I'm, I'm not sure. So, you know, obviously I can't test any other components in here to see if something else set it off. Um, and I can't confirm juice damage either just because obviously it's so toasted there's no juice or moisture or anything left in there. Uh, it does seem like there's different versions or different revisions of this board. Um, this one's clearly got a white frame around here and the one in the in that video um, has got it as well. Uh, I'll see if I can go back to the start. Yeah, right there. So that whole lower section of the board was previously covered in that white plastic frame 
and that's all completely melted and gone. Um, now, in the other videos I looked up for drag disassembly, there's another version of the board that doesn't seem to have that outside plastic piece at all. It's just the screen. Um, and that was, that model had a white, a white inner case. So, yeah, I know there's been different versions of the drag. There's, you know, there's a lot of different colors and they had resin panels and uh, the normal panels and they've been super popular as well. So, um, it, it, probably a similar thing happened with the Alien where you had an initial run of the device. They got super popular. They sold, you know, all their stocks that they had made. Um, they might have rushed to make another another lot or even had a different assembly line or, uh, you know, it, it's possible they contract another company um, even to, to make components for them. And um, something got changed. Either that frame got omitted from future models. They realized they didn't need it. Um, or, yeah, just variances in how it was manufactured um, when they tried to keep up with demand. Basically, they... You know, things can change over the over the life cycle of a product. And um, yeah, I mean, going back to the Alien, we saw, um, well, the Aliens actually, even they even have different firmware versions. So they, I think they use an entirely different microprocessor um, from one batch, one run of them to the next run. Um, so there were definitely, you know, definitely variances in the batches and, and through the product life. Uh, whether that's relevant to one that's going to fail or not, I'm not sure. It could be an indicator. It could be one runner's going to fail and the other isn't. But that's, again, not knowing whether this is just an inherent board fault that's happened or it was juice damage. Um, can't say for sure. But it, at this point, it doesn't look like anything wiring has failed. It doesn't look like... Um, it doesn't look like anything shorted to case. The contacts haven't popped out of place and shorted. Um, all the wiring was still in good condition and intact, apart from obviously this uh, positive wire that got completely toasted. But nothing had come apart, um, nothing had shorted to case. So it doesn't look like, yeah, it, it's not really a preventable thing or a, or a sort of an assembly error or something like that. Um, so I wish I had more, um, more ideas or a, a, like a smoking gun as it were to um to just point to something and say oh hey it's you know it's they're putting these things in wrong or this wire is getting in the wrong spot and getting shorted it doesn't look like that so yeah i'll have to leave it at either a board failure or juice damage okay now where to go from there is the next thing um what do you do if you've got a vupu drag uh, do you keep using it I mean, it's it's only been mm, three or four that I know of that I've seen posted. I mean, I'm sure there's more out there that it's happened to and just we haven't seen it. Um, so failure rate is probably pretty small. Um, that would make more sense if it was juice damage, just the ones that got particularly juicy inside. Um, had that, uh, you know, that might be doing it to them. Yeah, what do you do? You could take yours apart and have a look. If you know, how about this? If you know your your mod has had a lot of juice over it, like if you remember massively over dripping or having a tank that that just dumped a whole a whole tank of juice down your mod, um, then it might be worth in this case taking it apart. I mean, it's never good using a device that you know has had a lot of juice in it because it, it's it's going to it's going to affect things. Now, there's another point with juice damage. Juice doesn't directly short a board out. So you could have a board sitting on the bench with power on it. I could even show you guys. You could just pour juice over it. It's not going to immediately burst into flames or completely short out. It'd probably continue to run for quite a long time. Um, now there is some conductance in juice, just just not much. So what that means is either you can get slightly higher, higher currents in, in very small components that aren't meant to have high currents, like little tiny surface mount resistors, even into the microprocessor, processor, things like that, that don't like lots of current at all. Like minuscule current is what they're designed for. Um, you can get electrolysis on the board as well. Sometimes you'll open them up, um, things that have had water or any sort of liquid damage, 
um, will, will be green in places where the, the copper has start, started to oxidize or um, basically electrolysis in that area. From any currents of voltages that are there, you're getting a little current flow through the juice. Um, it's starting to eat away at the, the solder, at the copper tracks, and eventually you'll get something that will, you know, a component will fail, um, will we'll lose contact with the board. Um, the thing it can do is it could trigger MOSFETs. So if it got to the point where the MOSFET actually got um, actually got t triggered, switched on by a stray voltage conducting through onto the gate of the MOSFET, um, that could turn the MOSFET on. It actually looks like, okay, let's have a look at this guy. I'm gonna assume they're similar. Similar construction being a gene board it does appear to have a conformal coating. Yeah, you can see the shininess on the board. So the board manufacturers will often put, they'll spray a coating over the board, um, which is basically supposed to resist some moisture damage, protect the tracks, protect any of the exposed metal. And it does look like this has got it, even though this is so damaged, I can see there that um, there's still a coating on top of these MOSFETs and co covering right over the pin and I can actually scrape it off there. It's quite thick on this on this one. You can see, I don't know if you guys can see that, I just scraped off some of that conformal coating. There it is there. It's gone a bit crispy but it's often kind of soft, soft stuff. Kind of slightly tacky even. Um, yeah, so look, those MOSFETs should be fairly well protected from direct juice damage. Unless something else is shorting from the juice or, yeah, something else is triggering that MOSFET to fail. That's, again, assuming the MOSFET's failed. Okay, I'm just going around in circles. So if you've got a drag, what do you do? Um, it's relatively easy to have a look at the board. And again, if your device has been completely dry and you know you haven't dropped any juice over it, I wouldn't bother taking it apart. Don't don't fix it if it's not broke. Um, but if you have noticed a lot of juice getting around the screen area, around the fire button area that you know you've had juice run down the front and like tried to wipe it out of the screen, just the design of the device, juice is kind of difficult. It's gonna be difficult to get out of inside there. So if it runs down and into the screen, yeah, it'll go inside. It'll, it'll get onto the board eventually. You can take yours apart and have a look if you know that's happened. Um, take out the screw. Two screws there. Uh, I think that's all there are on the, on the plastic case. You will need to undo the 510. You won't be able to get the whole case, um, what, what would you call that, inner, inner assembly out of the case. You won't be able to get it out of the metal case without desoldering the 510. Um, you won't be able to get it out completely, but you should be able to um, when you undo the 510, you'll get enough wiggle room to wedge it up out of the case um, like that, and you should be able to see the board. And if it's looking really crusty and lots of juice and, and, and yeah, gunk around the bottom of the board, I'd think about either doing a full dismantle and cleaning it if you're confident or just, just not using the device anymore, getting a new device. Um, also, you could probably tell by shining a bright light in the USB port, the juice is gonna run down this way and there are holes in the USB port just there. So you'd likely see some gunk caught up inside the port. Um, could be an indicator that it's gotten juicy. Now, if your drag hasn't had any juice damage on it, um, well, hasn't had any juice contact it over its lifetime and you, you're pretty confident with that, yeah, do you continue using it? Mm. You know, it's only a few, but it does make you wary, that's for sure. Um, wish I could give more solid answers on that, but I, I can't really. Um, I don't know if these are going to be isolated or whether there's going to be more and more of them. There's not much way to tell. And it, and it seems silly to say uh, this whole run of devices, which there's going to be thousands of them out there, um, to just not use them because a few of them have had a problem. But the thing is, in this case, it's obviously it's a 
you know, when they go, it's a big problem. It doesn't just it doesn't just stop working and leave you without your device for the day. It you know, it goes up. It goes up in flames. If you didn't notice this in time, I mean, the you know, if this is at home and you're you're you've left the batteries and you're not at home, yeah, uh, man, that's a little that's a little scary. Um, how about if you're not using your drag and you're leaving it unattended, take the batteries out. It's good advice for any mod. Um, anything you're leaving at home where it's unattended, take the batteries out if you can. Um, it, you know, if it's not an internal uh, battery device, just, just pop them out. Anything you're not using, leave the batteries out. Leave the batteries in a case or stored somewhere else safely. Um, but especially in this case, because yeah, if it happens, it's going to get nasty. Um, okay, I'm not sure if that's a real clear wrap up, but juice damage, worth having a look inside. If you know it's had a lot of juice inside, worth having a look, seeing if you can clean it. If it looks really bad, maybe retire the device. If it looks dry and you know it hasn't had any, up to you where you want to go with it. If you're going to continue to use it, take the batteries out. Um, keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on the forums as well. If we see them start popping up all over the place, burnt like this, yeah, I'd start getting wary about continuing to use it. Um, we'll update you guys if uh, if I can find out anything else or if I uh, come across something else. I'll keep looking at this because I'm not 100% satisfied with the, sort of the conclusions, but that's what we've got for now. All right, cheers, guys. See ya.